Engine 24, respond to a shooting. You have PD and route, not yet on scene. 751, respond on this assault with Engine 24. Engine 21, respond on attempted suicide. Welcome to Cargers responding to this house fire. We do believe this is occupied. Neighbors called us in. It seems to be pretty involved. You can't get to the door. For firefighters, days range pretty rapidly. It could be a pretty standard day in which nothing very serious occurs or it can be one of those days where you can have a traumatic full arrest. That's one thing about this job where you really don't know what's going to happen. And each one of those calls, especially depending on the severity, kind of just stick with you the entire time. Well, the trauma that we uh, talk about with firefighters is what, what we call the cumulative trauma. Our firefighters aren't necessarily always directly impacted by one single call. Uh, when one is subjected to those time and time again, they add up and seem, you know can take their toll on an individual. The cumulative effect of trauma um, is going to be very personal. If our stress response is activated repeatedly over an extended period of time, um, our bodies are not really built for that. So when you combine that with working as a firefighter, where your job is to essentially provide support and rescue for the public's worst day potentially of their life. That then becomes a really difficult path to navigate with your health with that cumulative exposure. A year and a half ago now, I made a pretty bad car accident on I-35 in which uh, the tires blew out. A few months later, my husband gets his tires rotated and he gives me a call and says, yeah, the tire guy said I needed new tires, but I, I I think it'll be fine, I'm just gonna ride it out. And then I flat out told him, you need to replace your tires today. And I thought about it, I was like, why did I have such this gut-wrenching reaction to him not wanting to change his tires and wanting to wait for money? And it's because that call that I made a few months prior. And as soon as I made that realization, uh, my husband came home and I told him, I was like, I'm sorry I snapped at you, but this is why. The nature of the job asks you to assess everyone else. So how to then be able to, uh, to prioritize what your body is telling you is still a very important skill to have on scene. Being able to not just be ready and prepared, but also be able to recover. So it's, it's a sort of perpetual holding of their breath and, and they, they need to breathe. So where to breathe then becomes the question. The effects that we can see uh, someone that's not mentally well uh, coming into the job, if they're distracted and they can't pay attention, uh, whether it's somebody that's driving a, a large apparatus or someone's pumping or a paramedic that's working on a patient, if they're not focused and they're not well, obviously that detracts from their performance and their physical ability. Uh, not only is there a risk to for their personal well-being, but the well-being of their teammates and their fellow crew members. As soon as you realize you're not sleeping right or you're not eating correctly, you don't find joy in what you used to find joy, that's the time that your your mind or your body's telling you, hey, it's time to look for someone to talk to. It's time to reach out for some help. And there's no shame in that. Recovery after a call. Again, it's a personal question as to like what is re-energizing. I'm not talking about, you know, another pot of coffee or an energy drink, you know, in terms of re-energizing, but what uh, individual people through curiosity find uh, fulfilling. It can look like taking time to yourself, whatever time that is and how you like to enjoy that time. It, you know, could also look like spending time with other people. This is why it's really important to know your people, to know what their baseline is. When I had about two years on the job, I had a call that I was able to relate to my personal life. Well, after that call, um, I was alone, and so I came back to my normal station. I walk in and it's like everyone knew. <laughs> everyone like, hey, do you wanna talk about it? And I just walked back in the door and I was like, I'm fine, and went to my bedroom. You know, people handle stress in different ways. Some people need to talk about it 
right away. Other people, they, they need a little time to process exactly what happened. What we really have to get into is we try to get to learn our, our personnel before the traumatic event occurs and so that we can be in tune with what's changed with their behavior. If we don't know their normal behavior, then we may miss something that may be off from uh, what it generally is. For a very long time, mental health has sort of been siloed in a different arena than the rest of how we have talked about, quote, physical health care. But mental health is health. Because it's more of this um, unseen type of medical fitness, we, we assign that it's somehow different than like how another organ in our body functions. And then teaching you know, how to be in touch with what that looks like for you is a really important skill for firefighters to have. You know, my role is more related to bridging the gap between an identified need and how to get someone uh, connected with the provider that's the best fit for them uh, long term. Changing a, a culture or breaking down stigmas is a long term investment and I, I think we've come a long ways with that. Uh, it's a great start to get us on that path to taking care of not just the physical health but the mental health and and taking care of the whole fire, the firefighter as a whole, because we want the whole firefighter to be healthy and that makes us better to do our jobs. The fire department has made a really good push over the last few, well, really since I've been hired on, about making other programs available to firefighters in, in regards to mental health. So it just kind of shows that the department is taking mental health seriously. Having those resources out there allows us to definitely tap into those emotions and dealing with them in a healthy way versus negative way. I'm really excited to be able to be part of this new direction that the department is wanting to go in and providing uh, not just physical supports to uh, firefighters and their families, but also some of the other necessary parts of maintaining our health, uh, including uh, mental health and, and behavioral health promotion within the department.